Hey there, tech fans. Rick here again from the O-Ray team. In today's video, I'll show you how you can easily remotely control your PC from any room in your home using an HDMI extension kit with KVM capabilities. Now, you might be thinking, when would you ever need to remotely control a computer? Well, let's say, for example, your computer is located in your office, you've got a beautiful monitor set up with a keyboard and a mouse, wonderful sound system, you're wired into the internet, but you like to work from the den every now and then. It's a little bit quieter, a little bit more relaxing. Well, normally, you'd have to disconnect your computer, drag everything over to the den, and then reconnect everything in the den every time you wanted to move to that room. Not any longer. You can now use a kit like this that allows you to extend the functionality, both video, keyboard, and mouse, to the den just by setting up a keyboard, mouse, and monitor, and you have complete control over the PC at that distance. And a kit like this one, which is the O-Ray UHD, Dash EXB 400 dash KVM not only transfers the video so you can see exactly what's happening on your computer, but it also transfers back the keyboard and mouse functionality so you can completely control what's happening on that PC in your office. Now, I'm going to spend a few minutes and explain some of the other benefits of this product, but essentially what happens with an HDMI extension kit is it takes the HDMI signal from whatever device you have connected and transfers that to the remote location over a LAN cable, typically a CAT6 or a CAT7 cable. And that's the only connection between the two sites. And then at the remote site, you can see the video, you can hear the audio, and you can enjoy the content. If you have a sophisticated system like this one, it also has infrared control, which means you can have a remote control over here that picks up the IR signals, sends them back over the same LAN cable to the primary site, and rebroadcast them. So if you're looking at something from a DVD player or a media player, you can actually control how that content's being played. What makes this kit so special is it has a KVM functionality built in, which stands for keyboard, video, and mouse, which essentially allows you to connect up a keyboard, a mouse, and a monitor on this end and have all of those control signals sent back over that same LAN cable to the primary side so you can interact with your computer, and it's pretty amazing. Now, what I'd like to do with this video is next I'll take a closer look at both of these units because every HDMI extension kit includes a sender unit and a receiver unit of some type. This particular kit can handle a CAT6 cable between those two locations and provides 150 meters of distance between the primary and secondary side. But I'll take a closer look at both units and I'll explain the connections you'll need to make to use it with your own equipment. And then I'll come back at the end and I'll actually demonstrate just how simple this product will be to use once you get it home. So stay tuned now for the closer look. With this particular HDMI extender kit, you'll find a sender unit and a receiver unit. The sender unit is at the primary location. It's wherever the PC is located today. And the receiver unit is located wherever you'd like to use that PC at that remote location. So this would typically be in your office, and this may be in your den. And the connection between these, again, is a single LAN cable, typically a CAT6 or a CAT7. Now I'll take a look at the sender unit first. On the front, you'll find a power indicator on the left-hand side. This unit uses a power over cable technology, which means you only need a single power supply, either plugged in here or plugged in at the receiver end, and that supplies all the power both of the modules need by sending that power over the LAN connection between them. So you can plug the power supply in here or in the other end. When you plug that power supply in, this unit goes through a power on self-test to check the electronics to make sure everything's working okay. Once it passes that test, it'll light the power indicator, letting you know the unit's ready to use. You'll find an EDID switch setting here, and that's really nice because you can adjust the frame rate and resolution to make sure you've got proper synchronization. It gives you a lot of adjustment, and that's explained in the manual. To the right of that is a service port. It's a micro USB port, and you'll use that to update firmware on the device. You can connect the micro USB cable from here to your computer. You can push the firmware to here and update features and function based on new firmware. On the bottom of the unit are ventilation slots and two mounting holes, so you can actually mount this up off the ground and out of the way. On the rear of the units where you'll make all the connections, and again, this is a power port. You can plug the power supply in here or on the other end. This is the LAN port. That's the single cable between the sender and receiver unit, again, a CAT6 or CAT7. HDMI input port connects up to your PC. And now what I do with the PC unit is I have an AB switch at my primary location so I can switch between using the computer in that room or sending it to my remote location. But that's an HDMI connection. There are two infrared blaster connections right here, infrared in and infrared out. The kit comes with a set of those. You can plug those into these two ports here. Then finally, there's a connection on the right-hand side that uses this custom cable that comes with the kit. You'll plug this end into the sender unit and this end into your PC, and that's what provides control of your mouse and your keyboard from the remote location. Now on the receiver end, very similar setup. You have a power indicator on the front, service port on the right, ventilation slots on the bottom, mounting holes for the brackets. 
On the rear of the unit, again, you have a power port right here. And if you plug the power supply in, in the other end, you don't have to worry about that. This LAN port is where the other end of that CAT6 cable gets plugged in. The HDMI output port goes to the monitor you're using at the remote location. Two more infrared blaster ports right here, and you can use the set of infrared blasters and plug them in the correct ports. And then finally, two more full-sized USB-A ports right here where you can plug in a keyboard or a mouse that you can use to control that computer at the remote location. And I'll show you in the demonstration how to do that. But that's pretty much all there is to it. It's a very simple system to use, and with a few simple connections, you can be up and running. Now I'll show you just how easy it'll be to remotely control your PC from another room in your home. And for this demonstration, over here I've set up the PC just like I have it in my office today. I have the monitor connected, I have a keyboard and mouse, and that's where I normally use the PC. But every now and then, I like to use it remotely in the den where it's a little bit quieter when the kids are home, and that's what I've set up over here. A second monitor, keyboard and mouse, and this represents the remote location that I'd like to remotely control the PC from. In front of me, I have the sender module here and the receiver module here. Now, the first set of connections I'll make are to the sender module, and I'll start by disconnecting the monitor from the computer, and I'll plug the HDMI cable that normally plugs into the monitor into the sender unit. Now, if you don't want to do this manually every time, you can do what I do and use an AB switch here that I can easily switch between the local monitor or the remote monitor. And the best part is this particular system has a set of infrared blasters that will catch the remote control signals at the remote location and send them back and rebroadcast them at the primary side. So I can actually use the infrared remote from that AB switch at the remote site to switch back and forth between local monitor or remote monitor. The next connection I'll make is the PC connection that actually transfers the data from the keyboard and mouse at the remote site to the PC, and it's included with the kit. The one end plugs into the back of the sender module, the USB-A end of it plugs into my computer. The only thing I'm missing now at the sender module side is power. I've already plugged that power supply in. Again, a barrel connector plugs into the power port in the back, and it immediately starts a power on self-test. Now, because this system uses a power over cable technology, I could have plugged that power supply in at the sender end or the receiver end, and the power for the other module is sent across the LAN cable between them. Now I'm ready to connect up the receiver module, and this is the remote location. So I've got a cable connected to the monitor. I'll plug that into the HDMI output port in the back of the receiver. And now I'm ready to add the LAN cable between the two. And it's interesting, because that's the only connection between those two sites. And it's got to be a CAT6 or a CAT7 cable. I have a short CAT6 cable right here, and I'll plug it into the receiver and then into the sender. Now watch the receiver when I plug this in. You'll notice the power indicator come on over here. You can see that the power is being sent over. Now what's happening right now is both of these modules have gone through a power on self-test and it should in a second adjust because it sees that secondary module and there you go. So I've got video output from my computer at the primary side at that secondary location. And that's what an HDMI extender does pretty basically. But the really nice part about a KVM system is I can now plug in a keyboard and mouse at this side and completely control what's happening at the primary side. Now I like to use wireless products, so I've got a dongle here, but you can use wired products as well. The minute I plug that dongle in, you can see immediately that I have control over here now. I can start and I can stop the video. I can use the keyboard. Basically, I'm using the PC over here, even though it's located hundreds of meters away in my office. And it just makes things so much easier to be able to move to the den, push one button, and use the computer at that remote location with nothing more than a CAT6 or CAT7 cable connecting those two locations. And it really is that simple to get it working. I hope this video was helpful in showing you just how easy it'll be to remotely control a PC from any room in your home using an HDMI extension kit like this one with KVM functionality. Some of the added benefits of the O-Ray UHD-EXP400-KVM include things like the infrared blaster kit, which essentially picks up the remote control signals from the remote location and sends those back over the same LAN connection to the primary location where they're being rebroadcast so you can control the content you're watching. It's also really helpful, like I'd mentioned, if you're using an AB switch at that primary location to switch the monitor between a local mode and the remote mode, you can use the remote at that secondary site and those signals are sent back to control that switch. The product also features the very latest in power over cable technology, which greatly simplifies your wiring because it means a single power supply at the sender or receiver end is all you'll need for the entire solution. And finally, this product can extend HDMI media content in full 4K 60 frames a second ultra high definition resolution, which means you're going to get the best possible picture at that remote location from your primary site. Everything you need to get started is included with the kit, and with a few simple connections, you can be up and running in no time. So until next time, thanks again for watching.